Congress intervenes in an attempt to try and, and clarify the, the rules of the, uh, of the road for everyone. They enact Section 503A of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And essentially what, what 503A says is that, that compounded drugs that meet certain requirements that are set forth in the law are going to be exempted from three critical provisions uh, under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The first is the new drug approval requirement um, that I mentioned a moment ago. The idea is they are not going to deem those compounded drugs unapproved new drugs so long as the compounded drugs otherwise meet the safe harbor created in 503A. They're going to exempt those products from something called current good manufacturing practice. And this is essentially the very complex series of regulations um, that uh, pharma companies are expected to adhere to um, when they are manufacturing um, on mass levels uh, uh, drugs to ensure that they are consistently safe, pure, potent, um, that they always contain the same amount of active ingredient excipient, um, they dissolve at the same rate, et cetera. So this is called GMP. It's a very complex process, and I think the Congress recognized there was no way a corner pharmacy is ever going to be able to approximate true GMP, and so they were going to exempt it from it as, as part of the safe harbor. Then finally, the Congress exempted these compounded drugs from a more technical provision called adequate directions for use. And I'm not going to belabor this other to say simply that the reason they did this was there was a body of case law that had developed that basically said any new drug, any drug, prescription drug that's offered for sale in the United States that is not approved by FDA lacks adequate directions for use as a matter of law. And so the Congress recognized that if they were going to exempt these compounded drugs from the new drug approval requirements, they were also going to have to exempt it from the adequate directions for use uh, requirement. And so they did. Importantly, though, this 1997 version of the law also prohibited pharmacies from advertising the names of the drugs that they compounded. And to the point that you raised a moment ago, the, the, the purpose for doing this was to say it's appropriate in certain instances for pharmacies to actually create these medicines at the request of physicians to treat kind of individualized patient needs. But what they didn't want was the pharmacies going out and kind of generating the business. The idea was the pharmacies were supposed to be reacting, if you will, to the directive of the physician and not the other way around. And so the idea was if you limit the degree to which the pharmacies can promote or advertise their, their practice, you to some degree um, curtail uh, the, the degree to which the pharmacies are driving these exchanges as opposed to the physicians. Um, and what was interesting, you know, going back to that initial issue raised in 1938, is that, that Congress was now saying very clearly, look, these compounded drugs, it may be that the states are the ones who regulate the practice of pharmacy, it may be that the states are the ones who license pharmacists, but these products are indeed subject to federal regulation under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, they are new drugs within the meaning of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, but under certain circumstances, the Congress was going to exempt them from these, um, these critical requirements in that law, in that statute. 